Woo merchants love this idea that has been promoted by Roger Penrose and Stuart Hameroff called the quantum mind. This is the hypothesis that consciousness is ultimately a quantum phenomenon. Spiritualists love this idea because they see it as an opportunity to use quantum woo to argue that things like the soul exist. Penrose has argued that the way the brain produces the mind cannot be described by classical physics and must be a quantum phenomenon. This is bullshit. As Victor Stenger says, in the unconscious quantum I presented a criterion for determining whether a system must be described by quantum mechanics. If the product of a typical mass, speed, and distance for the particles of the system is on the order of Planck's constant or less, then you cannot use classical mechanics to describe it, but must use quantum mechanics. I took the typical mass of a neural transmitter molecule, 10 to the minus 22 kilogram, its speed-based thermal motion, 10 meters per second, and the distance across the synapse, 10 to the minus 9 meter, and found that mass times speed times distance equals 1700 times Planck's constant. More than three orders of magnitude too large for quantum effects to be necessarily present. This makes it very unlikely that quantum mechanics plays any direct role in normal thought processing. Stuart Hameroff wasn't impressed by this calculation. Stenger says, on his website, Hameroff scoffs, I've not seen this proposal in a peer-reviewed journal, nor listed anywhere as a serious interpretation of quantum mechanics. Actually, my criterion is based on textbook quantum mechanics originating with Niels Bohr in 1913, hardly in need of peer review. Furthermore, in the unconscious quantum, I make it clear that my criterion applies as a necessary condition. That is, when mass times speed times distance is on the order of Planck's constant or smaller, then you must use quantum mechanics. This is not the case for the brain. But then Hameroff adds, Nonetheless, I agree with Stenger that synaptic chemical transmission between neurons is completely classical. The quantum computations we propose are isolated in microtubules within the neurons. If the quantum computations are isolated in microtubules within the neurons, then how do they have any effect on the neurological processes that carry out cognition? Those processes are essentially interactions between neurons. As Stenger says, it is safe to say that the penrose hameroff model has not been supported by the evidence to the satisfaction of the great majority of neuroscientists.